everybody. Welcome to the stream. Let me get to finish getting set up. Running just a little bit late today. I apologize for that. And uh, it's a little fuzzy through YouTube Studio, but streaming it looks like I'm nice and crisp and clear. So that's a good sign, I guess. Alrighty. All right, so I can see comments and everything. And I'm really, really hoping that uh, um, you folks are able to uh, get a decent uh, feed on this. Get the Rumble chats up. Okay, it looks like the Rumble feed is good. That's actually pretty good. I'm going to pause that so I don't overload my bandwidth here. I'm not sure how much I'm actually going to be getting. And yes, I have a bunch of stuff around here because uh, I am uh, in my work working office. All right. So, move these up here so I can get to them easily. And, uh, falling all over the place, my red floss. And, of course, sorry, the Tama shoot for the floor. Hey, Gwen, nice to see you on. Thank you for the uh, sound check. I appreciate that. Let's me know I'm doing uh, reasonably well. All right. So I did not finish getting this set up between streams, unfortunately. Like I said on my note, it was kind of busy. And I've been trying to stay caught up on this, the stuff that I'm actually supposed to be here for. But I don't want to leave you folks in a lurch while I get this done. So uh, got it going tonight. It is cool enough in the evening. I don't have to have the AC on in here, which is a really good thing, because if I did, you wouldn't be able to hear a word I was saying. But I should definitely be into braiding before this stream is over. Oops, that one appears to have caught on that loop there. Let me do a little more. Okay, there. Looks like we'll be okay on this one. And... There we go. Okay. So I think I'll go left and right as we're going along through here. Um, the mechanical odometer type counter thing that I made for the event attendants here is in place now. And I will I have a little video I did of a test run that I'm going to upload as a YouTube short. And I will also try and get some video of it in action um, for my channel as well. Uh, show you guys what I've been spending a lot of time on before coming out here. Uh, it's really nice to be out here, visit with friends, uh, people I don't see very often. Uh, so I'm looking forward to being able to spend some time doing that. Uh, the uh, car, I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, apparently the water pump blew on my car. And... Uh, I'm having it fixed. It, theoretically, oops, they were supposed to call me today. It's supposed to be done today. I will have to call them um, Monday morning and uh, confirm that uh, it's done before I pick it up. Um, but uh, since the, in PT Cruisers, since the uh, water pump has run off the timing belt, and you have to take pretty much take the timing belt off to get to the water pump. And I didn't know the last time the timing belt had been changed. I figured it was I would go ahead with the mechanic's recommendation to change the timing belt. And uh, so they were doing that. As they were get, tearing stuff down to it, they found a couple of uh, cracked serpentine belts and uh, uh, thrashed out mo upper motor mount. And the uh, additional cost that it's going to be to take care of those things is... Um, another hundred bucks. So I think I've got a pretty good mechanic uh, price-wise. Hope their work quality is decent too. Uh, but uh, I don't think I am uh, can reasonably could say I'm getting ripped off for the work that he's doing. And I have had a timing belt replaced uh, on a PT Cruiser before and the price is not unreasonable for that. 
alone and they're doing the water pump as well. So admittedly where I am, uh, property is not that expensive. So that probably plays a part in that. I uh, got the uh, microphone in a little bit different place here. So it's a little further away. You probably hear some background noises some more this time. And as uh, before, if somebody comes in to talk to me, I will probably hit the mute unless they want to be on stream. So, and uh, let's see. We're making good time on getting this tied up. Oops, I missed that here. Uh, had the mouse over the, uh, the chat. I do not need to know about the Bing launcher. You can stop with that pop-up. There we go. Um, it was over the chat window, so I wasn't quite seeing what people were saying. And the uh, desktop that I'm not currently using, the fan keeps kicking on high for that, which is understandable. It is a bit warm out here, and uh, it's an older computer, so it wants to run the fan a little bit more, keep things cool. Mainly because, you know, dust builds up in places and you don't get as good a heat transfer. So if I uh, took it apart, blew it out, cleaned it really well, it probably wouldn't do it as much, but not sure it's worth the effort at this point. They seem to be rolling up decently. But they opened the event today to uh, the attendees that are not working on staff. So people are starting to pour in. Tomorrow is when they really start coming in. So they're theoretically expecting in the ballpark of 15,000 attendees, which would be, I think, the most this event has ever had. But again, it is the 50th year celebration for it. All right. So we are still looking relatively decent here. Keep that even. All right. So I need. 10 more, I think. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I am missing one more skein of floss. There it is. Grab a couple more. Tama. Looks like it is complaining a little bit about the Wi Fi connection, but probably not enough to cause major problems. And I did check the bandwidth usage uh, for streaming uh, from my phone. And it looks like it's not too horrible. So assuming I don't have to wind up using the uh, um, bandwidth for other things, I should be able to stream at least twice a week for the rest of the war if I have enough connections to power for the signal to get through. But, uh, it does look like it is uh, showing up on uh, YouTube Studio, okay? So I'm hopeful that'll be the case. Oh, and I uh, meant to show you folks something that I was given today I thought was interesting. And remember, this is like a historical... Um... Oh, oops. That didn't damage anything. Me to show this. I was gifted an ear spoon for cleaning out earwax. I don't know if they're telling me something or not, but uh, some other friends got these too. So, all right. Ends here, and let's get this particular one strung up. It's still passing through pretty decently. Though as high as it up, as high as the bag is hanging at this point with not all the tama on, I suspect the bag is a little underweight. So when I have time, I will check and confirm that uh, it's in the ballpark or add or remove weight as necessary. I'll also be picking up a new Mara die once the merchant I'm going to get it from is in it is here. And yes, I can make my own Maradai, and I do plan on it. It's just um, I want to go ahead and like have an extra one or two so I can keep more braids in process so I can kind of 
kind of shift through and not do the same thing uh, every stream when I'm not doing the pickup raids. Right. I think that was enough. I'll do one more just to be safe. But uh, yeah, it's kind of warming up in here, but the air temperature is going down. So I'm hoping that the uh, temperature starts going down in here before it gets too high. All right, let's get this one rolled up. Looks like we're up to four people. That's pretty good. Oop, uh, YouTube Studios says five concurrent viewers. So. And one more, and I will be three quarters of the way done setting this up. For those who know which event this is, this is my uh, site medallion. Let's see. Let's adjust the focus so you can see a little better. Now, mine, I believe, is a different color than most people since I do work on the staff. So, uh, and we're back in focus down there. But yeah, I got to keep this on me whenever I'm out of camp for the next. A little over two weeks because it's the proof that I have paid my fees. And yes, if you work the event staff here, you do pay your fee, pay the entrance fee the same as everybody else. All right. Let's see. Let's hope this is the right way. That one looks pretty like it came undone reasonably well once I got the first two kind of off loops taken care of and it was unrolling freely. And we'll just tie this off. And then we only have eight more to go. Hey, Texas Nana, nice to see you on. Uh, no worries about being late. I uh, hope you have a good dinner. Um, my wife and I, along with the rest of our uh, crew here, uh, had a rotisserie chicken uh, from Walmart, some mashed potatoes, corn, and potato wedges. And uh, starting tomorrow, my wife will be running our food plan. And I believe she is planning to cook soy ginger chicken, uh, which is uh, chicken cooked in soy sauce, sprinkled with powdered ginger, and it is really tasty the way she cooks it. She knows how to cook it to where it's just tender, uh, not too dry, but not no pink or anything like that. Since she is a, or she did spend ten years as a uh, working chef, uh, more of a line chef, um, but she does know how to cook, which admittedly makes it a little harder than I would like to lose weight, but I also really enjoy it. The food she cooks. All right, that one tried to tangle up here. Let's get this untangled. This looks like it'll be relatively easy to do. Nothing's overly tight. Just a couple of loops that wrap around each other. And once I get the loops out from in between, it should uh, just fall apart into a straight line. Trick is you gotta pull them the right way where it comes apart, otherwise you just pull it into a knot. And I think we are yes, there we go. And almost there. There we go. And do the Lorx head knot? All right, I'm going to grab another two Tama, pulling them two at a time so I remember to do them in even amounts is helpful. 
I don't want to get lose track and put them in the wrong order. Ooh, fried bread dough sounds pretty good. I do enjoy that. Um, I grew up in Idaho, and my mom used to make something she called scones, which are not at all like British scones. Uh, it's more like fry bread. Basically, she would make her um, bread dough recipe and um, pull it out into kind of like uh, little flat ovals or rounds, and she would uh, fry it in oil. And we would uh, put butter and honey on it, and it was absolutely fabulous. And I'm pretty sure it had an absolute ton of calories. Of course, my mother was so active uh, while I was growing up that uh, she really did not gain weight. I think uh, for most of my childhood, she was about um, five foot one and about 110 pounds. So. Another recipe I really enjoyed that she made um, was what she called butter fondant, which again is nothing at all like uh, cake fondant, which I understand from my wife is absolutely horrible tasting stuff that you use for sculpture and design. Um, butter fondant that uh, she made for us is uh, a lot like the um, vanilla cream centers of uh, dipped chocolates the smooth, creamy stuff, and uh, she would make that maybe once or twice a year, because otherwise we would have probably been completely round kids, because we would just eat that as much as we could. We enjoy it quite a bit, but as an adult, now that I have the recipe that I got a few years ago, I'd say um, we make it maybe once a year, because again, otherwise I would probably be a lot heavier than I am now. It's nice to know that it's a widespread tradition. I would not expect it to be otherwise, but apparently it's got different names in different areas. Okay. Let's roll this one up here now that it's tied off. Let's see if I can avoid getting another Almost not going here. Looks like it's going pretty good. Don't see anything that's uh, snagging up. And we are almost there. All right, definitely no knots then. Let's get this knotted off. There we go. And one more for the right side. That's well, I should check the ambient air temperature, but I'm feeling lazy right now. And We're up to five people. That's a nice amount of people watching the stream. I appreciate that. Okay, and this one through. I'll tie this one off, and we'll have six left to go. And bring this one over so I can tie the end off. Now, I am expecting that once I get back, it'll only take me probably about three or four hours or so to get uh, Rob's braid all set up and ready to braid. So I'll be starting that right away when I get back home, which is just under, just over two weeks right now. We'll probably head back um, Saturday the 12th is my expectation. Uh, usually at that point, we've been out here for three weeks and we're getting kind of tired. So we're, we're about ready to go home at that point. And our job tends to really wrap up about Thursday or Friday. 
of that final weekend. And rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep that Tama rolling. I can't think of another lyric. Rawhide. There we go. No knots. Just need to finish rolling this one up. And tying it off. Orx head knots. There we go. And... All right. Bring over another pair of Tama. We have to do this three times total, and we'll be done with that. Assuming I didn't screw up and miscount the amount of Tama I prepped for this. And... Let's see. Actually, I don't want to sit that over there just yet. I want to start with these. I'm actually getting a fair amount more sleep, but as expected, I'm not actually feeling more awake without my uh, modafinil. So that was and the expected thing, but having a chance to show my doctor how much I've been sleeping and the fact it doesn't seem to help is more evidence that they have the right diagnosis. Of course, my sleepiness is self-reported, but uh, my roommate and my wife have both seen me uh, about 10 hours after I've taken a pill, just kind of like, mm, let's stop being so active and kind of almost fall over metaphorically uh, at that point. So it's obvious to them that the, uh, the medicine is working as expected. And it's a treatment, not a cure. But at my age, as long as I can get it treated, I really don't care if there's a quote-unquote cure. Because I don't seem to really have uh, much in the way of side effects. And the medicine does what I would like it to do, which is make it so I'm not super sleepy all the time. There we go. All right, let's get this one tied off. And that was a golf cart going by. Almost there. Let's make sure that we don't get any knots forming. And there we go. I have to get a chopstick or something like that once I'm ready to hike the bag up higher than it hangs from the uh, safety pin it's on. Talked to a uh, friend of mine who lives in the Ohio area. He makes chain mail and they use a uh, round rod of uh, wax to uh, lubricate their chain cutter. Hold on a second here. Probably should put on the background music while I do that. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, they they use a rod of wax in their uh, chain, uh, the link cutter that they use for the chain mail. Um, and uh, we've been having issues with it. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so right side. Um, where uh, it's been... They've had to like make their own and it's been a complicated process where they 
make them out of paper or they make molds out of paper tubes. Oh, hold on a second. I am going to mute here real quick. Okay, we are back live. I was just doing some of my job. Um, Did you find the broken part? Anyway, uh, what I was uh, saying was is that it was a uh, complicated... Oh, sorry, I'm going to pause the audio again. All right, there we are. We're back again. And uh, so anyway, the process is, is they would uh, make a paper tube the size they needed. They would pour the mold in, or use it as a mold, pour the wax in, and uh, then they would have to, uh, you know, peel it off. Just a pain in the butt to do. So I've kind of come up with a idea of how they could do it inexpensively, just buying some uh, metal tubing. Uh, taking the one tube, cutting it down the middle lengthwise, taking the other tube that just barely fits over the first tube, slide the first tube into it, pour the wax. When it's hardened, slide the uh, larger tube off and then just pull the tube apart. It's reusable, it's consistent size, um, and uh, should be easy to use, make it a lot easier for them. Because apparently it's been a source of great frustration and uh, Makes me happy that I can do things like that. I just need to figure out the exact right size they need. Uh, I've got a sample that I can go from. And then uh, once that I've got that, make sure I can uh, use it consistently and it works the way I expect. Um, but that seems to be the simplest way to do it. I'll also make like a block out of maybe like PVC or something like that that uh, uh, won't be damaged by uh, liquid wax uh, so they can put the tubes in it. Um, and it doesn't leak around the bottom. So I'll need to make sure it's a nice tight fit for the outer tube as well as the outer tube with the inner tube. The uh, going to have to figure a way or the best method to cut it down its length that is not going to remove a lot of material and make their uh, the wax thing into an oval because uh, that would kind of defeat the purpose uh, a little bit. Um, also, an oval would not fit all that well or... A significant oval would not fit that well in the larger tube because you would have like gaps and you could have the uh, wax leak around. So I have to, you know, give it a couple of tries, make sure it works the way it's back before I hand it off to them. So anyway, that was my uh, experimentation concept last night. So anyway, uh, we're getting close here. Only three more after this one, and we're about a half hour in, so I'd say by 45 minutes in, I should be braiding. I will definitely go ahead and stop before um, Friday Night Frenzy, um, so it should not interfere with that for those of you who watch that. And uh, I will probably call it an early night, because I've been trying to get as much sleep as I can out here. Got another friend of mine that teaches yoga classes, so I might talk to him about ways I can stretch my hamstring because uh, six hour drive out here was not fun on my hamstring or my Achilles tendon, actually. Sorry, that's what I meant. I say hamstring because when they first told me about the uh, 
tight tendons I have. They mentioned hamstring initially. Let's see. Are those? Yeah, there we go. Getting to where I, real estate is critical. And we go on the right for this one. I'll set that up there. And on this one, there we go, there's the end. So this one, just two left to go, and I can actually start braiding on this one. This is going to be a simple enough one. I'm not going to have to show a diagram or anything. I'm not sure I'll have enough to actually show uh, on the camera, but I will definitely have enough that I can like take a thumbnail for the next one so you guys can see what it looks like when I schedule the next one. Not sure if I'm going to do like a Saturday or Sunday stream. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes. It might be a little short notice when I uh, post it relative to when it uh, shows up. And there we go. Let's wrap this one up on the right. No sign of knots. That's a good thing. A little bit of a tangle there. Let's see if I can carefully. There we go. That's good. And let's tie this off with a lark's head knot. And there we go. And let's get the last two ton out of the bag. Bag is empty now. All right. Second to last one. I am really pleased I'm getting close. And There we go. And the air temp is indeed starting to drop, so I won't have to worry about having to turn on the AC if I need to. That's always a good thing. And it's been kind of warm the last few days. This one, it got into the low night, I think the low 90s, like 91 or 92. Uh, and it was sunny, but starting tomorrow for the next, like, looks like the next six or seven days, the highs are supposed to be in like the upper 70s. So it should be very pleasant out here at that point, and I will enjoy it immensely. And uh, as the more people show up on site, one of the uh, great things uh, that uh, my wife and I appreciate will happen in that there will be enough people here closer to the areas that are vaguely swampy and wet that uh, the insects, specifically the mosquitoes, won't bother searching far and wide for their lunches, and we won't have to we won't have to lather up with as much uh, bug screen as we have been, or bug spray. But yeah, when you go from about a hundred people to uh, 
15,000 in a couple of days. The mosquitoes just don't bother flying quite as far anymore. And this will be the last one on the left here. Yeah, not bad. So I get to start before 40 minutes into the stream on the braiding. All right. And last one coming off. And all right. This one's starting off wanting to be tangled. All right, let's be careful with this one. There we go. I do have extras if this one did want it to be a pain in the butt, but fortunately that wasn't necessary. All right. Now the fun part is I don't really have much room under the Tama to, to work here. So let's see if I can't get this one. There we go. And tie this off. We'll be ready to go. This one can be one that you really have to pay attention to uh, your colors and where they uh, sit to do it right and not lose your um, uh, spot. But the particular color combination I'm going with um, is usually pretty well uh, able to tell where you are. able to tell where you are in the pattern and pick up uh, where you left off even if you've gotten up and walked away for a bit and don't remember exactly where you were all righty we are getting close here yeah Last one on the right. There we go. No knots. What are knots supposed to be? <coughs> Excuse me. Throat's a little dry. Probably grab a, something to drink here real quick. Okay. So I'm going to pull this down and center it up and try and get all of the threads a little closer to where they're supposed to be. That was not comfortable. <sighs> Safety pin opened up on me. All right. <sighs> okay. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the uh, um, scale and see how much weight I've got in the bag. Um, hmm. When I got there's a small scale. I'm not sure if that'll work. I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of weight here while I can think about it. Um, let's see where where did I put the extra weight? I think it's up here in this bag or box. No. Nope. Got anything that'll work real quick as a weight? Mm. 
Apparently not. All right, I'll just make do with this one. And let's see the best way to do this. All right, I'm just going to tie the bag off. Okay, let me make sure where my halfway point is. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. Trying to be really careful here not to accidentally let this slide off. Because if I do, it's going to be a pain in the butt. This is also very heavy, and I'm trying to do this with just my fingertips. Got that one there, this one here, bring them up, and tie once, and tie again. I don't want to do any more than this, because otherwise it will be a pain to untie when it's ready. All right, so that should work. All right, let's pull this back to the center. And reorient the ring to where the flat is up. Assuming I can do that. It's theoretically possible. Practically is another matter. All right. I think I've mostly got it. Okay, now while I got it there, let's bring everything back where it's supposed to be. All right, so there. And come on, Todd, you can do this. Close enough. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm going to even it out so where half the uh, mirror is red, half the mirror is black. Getting there. This wouldn't be quite as much of a problem if I had made sure to uh, make sure I knew exactly how much the counterweight was, and that would be enough. All right, so. The left and right sides are for each, red and black. Even this up a little bit. Top and bottoms are eight each, black and red. And the pattern is we go from the outside of each block to the center of the opposite block. So I'm going from the bottom to the top, from the top to the bottom, from the right to the left, and the left to the right. All right, so here we go. We go from the bottom to the top, top to the bottom, and outside edge to the end, and from the right to the left, and from the left to the right. There we go. A little snug doesn't want to go that way right now and we just keep repeating this pattern and to the top 
to the bottom. And to the left and to the right. All right, I'm going to pull on here to kind of snug it up to the middle. Let's see if I can get these pieces around. I'm not sure how well this is going to start, but it shouldn't be too horrible. And make sure these don't cross over each other, but they stay consistent. All right, then we go. All right, so, yeah. To the top, to the bottom, and to the left, and to the right. This will get easier and smoother as I go along. And to the top, and to the bottom. And to the left, and to the right. Make sure I'm not crossing over here. Pull it snug here. So as you can see, the top and bottom, the red and black, have exchanged places. And left to right, the, uh, let's make sure I'm not, yeah, there we go. The black and red orientation split line is still the same line. Black is still this side, red is still this side. And this is gonna stay color orientation uh, throughout the braid. This will be alternating back and forth, let's see. Let me catch up. Hey, Jen, nice to see you on. Welcome to the stream. I've actually started the braiding part. Speaking of which, I should probably try and stagger out these Tama so that uh, they're not quite getting in each other's way that much. All right. And, okay, so that's up. So this one lower. Higher and oops, lower. Let's make both these a bit lower so that uh, they're more even. And it's higher, so lower here and lower here. Let's make it a little, a little more even right there. Close. Ready to cycle back through and get back to our starting position. Just gotta make sure that unrolled properly. Since I'm still getting a little start, I'm going to pull it snug just to make sure everything's nice and secure. And yeah, I definitely need more weight. Top to bottom. And left. Top to bottom. Oops. 
I go all the way to the center, not part way to the center. And left to right. And getting to where I don't really need to pull it snug anymore, just a little bit of tensioning. Braid is looking the way it's supposed to. I know it doesn't really show up on camera. Sorry about that. Top to bottom. And left to right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and lower the camera down so you guys can get a better view of what it is I'm doing. Since this particular braid benefits from... Uh, Knowing what it is you're doing. All right, so let's see if I can orient it top to bottom a little better. Okay. Let's get a little lower. There we go. Let me see if I can get the color balance a little better. Okay, hopefully you can see a bit better there. All right, so as you can see, the most recent ones are in the center and are higher up. And you can tell the last move you did because it's the highest one. So you can see these are crossing over the center portion here. Hopefully if it's blown up well enough, I can't really see it on the my tiny screen that I'm looking at at the moment, but I can see it definitely looking at it directly. So. All right, so I've done one complete iteration of the pattern here. And again, top to bottom. And left to right. And I just realized I forgot to uh, adjust these. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. I think this will work out. Apologies on that. Wasn't thinking far enough ahead. All right. And there we go. All right. And top to bottom. And left to right. Once I've got the weight right, this uh, will sit a bit deeper and it won't be quite as tight of a braid. But on this one, you just kind of like pull from the bottom and jiggle a little bit to get the tension even on this one. And top to bottom and left To right. So if you stop anywhere at random on here, as long as you don't kind of uh, forget to move one half of your left to right or top to bottom, you can always just like look at it, see where you've got the high points, where your gaps are, um, and know which one you moved last. So I know that move these sides last. So all I have to do is go top to bottom. And left to right. Now, if you do kind of get, you don't remember that your black was away from you and your red was towards you on the sides, um, or you're not sure which is which, you can actually look at the braid and it'll show you which is the actual ones where the colors stay the same and they don't interact crossing. And you can, uh, Orient yourself from that, and you can just look at it, see which one was the most recent one you did. Whoops, you lost focus. Uh, can you see? Uh, looks okay on mine. Oh, um, I think what's going on here is not so much the lost focus as it is um, the stream bandwidth sucks, and it's uh, doing a lower resolution. 
Let me see if I can uh, force StreamYard to keep back up on that. All right. Let me look at settings. All right. So camera stand. Oh, yeah. Um, resolution went way down. Let me see if I can bump the resolution up. All right. Give it a few seconds there. See how it's doing. See if it's okay for you folks. Give me a second here. I'm doing it for 720p. And right, so it's looking good from my end. Let's see how is it doing from your folks' end? Uh, hopefully it has improved. Uh, if it's not, let me know on the next level, though I know StreamYard is not going to like that. All right, so I'll keep going. And. We go top. Oops. Make sure I grab the right ones. The bottom. And left to right. Go. And top to bottom. And left. To right. Yeah, I was afraid about this if uh, bandwidth wasn't good enough. All right. So, um, if the resolution keeps sucking, uh, let's see. Got to check the settings on here. Bump it to 720 on there. See what my reception looks like. All right, I'm going to try bumping it to uh, back up to 1080p. See if that helps at all. All right. Okay, it won't let me go any higher than 720 with this session. Sorry about that. I guess it locked in. I do apologize for the uh, screen quality. All right. I'm trying to think for a second here. We've been going for about an hour. Um, what I can try and do is I can try and do maybe an early Saturday morning stream and a late Saturday or Sunday, you know, try and do it when there aren't as many people using their cell phones. Or what I can do is I, I may try and... Um, just record it as video uh, for like about an hour or so, and then upload that. Um, so I just I just feel bad that you guys can't see uh, the resolution as what it is. Um, hmm, maybe I can uh, lower it a little bit and you can get a little, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just trying to think what the best option it would be is. All right, so. Top and bottom and left to right. And top to bottom and left. All right. All right. I don't know if this will show through that well, but that's kind of what the pattern looks like. It's an arrow, alternating color arrows on alternate sides and straight solid colors on right and left. So, all right. Well, I've got it going, but the resolution really sucks from what I can tell. I'm afraid I should probably go ahead and end the stream right now, and I will uh, I come up with a better solution. I'll make sure to fix the weight bag before I come on again. The first stream wasn't too bad, so I'm thinking it's uh, an issue of uh, bandwidth throughput. Let me check something here. And, yep, I know kind of what's the problem. Um, Somewhere along the way, I switched from direct cell connection to uh, Wi-Fi I've been using. 
So I'm going to have to forget that Wi-Fi on the phone. Um, so that will probably fix it because the um, the Wi-Fi here has been getting worse and worse as more people on staff use it. But the cell connection is based off the towers. So, um, yeah, I will try probably maybe 10 a.m. tomorrow morning stream if I've got the energy to set it up. And we'll try it making sure that I'm, I'm definitely on cell only and see how the connection goes for that. And I'm going to try that at directly 1080p. So at least I did get a stream in today, so YouTube won't think that I've died and gone away and all you folks, all you wonderful folks hate me, which I know is not the case, but YouTube is a corporation and they just don't care. So thank you very much, everybody who stopped by. I appreciate that. And like I said, I'll try and get a stream going this uh, Saturday or Sunday, and I'll... <laughs> Excuse me. I guess I'm a little more tired than I thought I was, um, and I will try and get uh, it set up to where the uh, resolution stays where it's supposed to be. So, everybody, have a good evening. Uh, stay safe and happy braiding.